Hello everyone, how you doing? I'm very excited to be bringing you the second part of the RackNet and Leadworks tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, we will learn how to make a client and we will connect it to the server. We did the server in the first lesson, so if you haven't done that, go back and do it. And if you haven't done any of the tutorials, go back to part zero where we learn how to set it, RackNet up in Visual C++ with Leadworks. Okay, so this one will be very simple. Let's just get right into it. I've made the uh, class objects object separate for servers and clients. You can put them together and let the player choose which one they want to start. This just makes things more complicated as you have a lot of if statements saying if is server equals true, do this, etc. So, I've kept them separate because it's easier, easy to explain and I it's just cleaner. So let's get started. We have our, um, I'll show you the class. Of course, we include RackNet includes, which we got before, and engine.h. I'm just going to include it in the main file. Include client.h. So we have it there. Awesome. All right, so that's all we need. And here's our client. You'll notice if you looked at the server that there's a lot of similarities. Same variables here. Um, all these um, types are the same as the server, so is this. These are also all the same, um, except for this one, set IP. Um, this is the same, except with a different name, and all these strings are the same. At the moment, it's very similar. The more you do with your game, with the networking, like spawning characters and shooting a gun, for example, the more difference it'll have between the clients and server. But the class structure looks very similar, and even the functions are very similar to begin with. So let's go straight into here to our, our constructor. In our constructor, oh, sorry, let's get rid of these. Don't need that. Um, all we do is we set some, w w when we construct, we just set the maximum number of players. I'm going to call that max play, not num play. And uh, we set the server port because the server we fix the server port. Um, we don't want that to change. And then what we go and do is uh, exactly the same as the server. We create a network interface. So firstly, let's create our um, in the main file. Let's create our client uh, pointer. And at the bottom, let's just um, client equals new client and we'll leave it as eight. Oh, whoops, what have I done? Ah, numlock, numlock, bastard. Take that. All right, next. Yeah, so we've constructed it. We want to do next is we want to create the network interface. Remember, this is the very first networking step first client equals rack net rack peer interface get instance so we're making an instance of the rack peer interface the interface for server and client is the same it's what you do with it that makes the difference so that step is the same we've just got a little error message making sure it worked um, and we're setting the system address all right a and the client id Something I didn't mention in the last um, tutorial was that every single um, client and server has something called a GUI, GUID, general user ID, and um, that's how the network identifies which uses which, but you won't have to worry about it too much. So let's do that in our file. So we want to go client create network interface oh yeah that looks sexy and okay so the next step is we want to set the IPs now you might be wondering why isn't this all just in one function the reason is that you might want to separate these because you might want to set up the network interface and then you might want to get the user to type in the IP in the port or you want, might want to set up the interface so that you can do a LAN server discovery, which I'll teach you later. 
and then get the port. So you would change this code if it if there was a LAN server discovery. However, or if you wanted the player to type this stuff in, but I'm just keeping it um, keeping it like that for now. So let's do that as well. Client uh, set IP. That step is not in the server because you don't need to set the server I IP or the, or the client port really, but don't, don't worry about that. Okay, so next step is to start up the network. I'm actually going to change this to client startup. Um, hold on a th second, I think someone's robbing my house. Uh, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I'm back. Don't worry, I'm alive. It was just the cats. Stupid cats. Anyway, let's continue. Where was I? Um, yeah. Network startup. This is also very similar to the client startup, just a bit different. Um, you set up a socket. Socket descriptor equals racknet socket descriptor. And then you put the an integer, which is the client port. Remember, we put in the client port earlier in the set IP function. So we need to convert the string to um, integer with this HUI. And this is just always zero. Um, next, we need to describe the socket family for the socket descriptor. And that's just the same as the server, AF underscore INET. That's for an IPv4 internet protocol. Then we actually start up the client. Uh, same thing again. We set the occasional th ping. Same thing again, except for client. Now this is where it gets a bit different. The server does not have to connect to anyone. The clients have to connect to a server. Duh. So, we have to connect. So, ignore this for now. We just want to go, okay, actually, a connection attempt request. That's the type we're doing. Car equals client connect. And then we have to put in the server IP, which we got from, um, we set in set IP. And hang on, the server port as an integer. So the server IP is as a string and the server port is as an integer obviously because IPs have multiple full stops in them. Then the password, which remember, if you remember, we set it to yo-yo, can be anything, as long as it's consistent between your server and client. And the length of the password, string length of yo-yo in an integer, of course. And this connection attempt result car is just to make sure that um, it did connect. So here we have an assert here, which is a is a special racknet assert. So rack assert um, car equals equals racknet connection attempt started. So it'll tell you if it doesn't connect properly. Um, yes, I'm feeling very happy right now. Alrighty, so let's do that. Client. Start up. Huh. Oh, hang on. I didn't change the name here. Client startup. There we go. And we're going to change shutdown network to shutdown client. And also create client interface. Let's go back and change those quickly. You won't have to change those in the class. I'll, I'm just changing them. Because I forgot to change them earlier. Uh, create client interface. Client set IP, client new, receive packets. Uh, client, uh, shut down client. All right. Alrighty. And of course, we need to change that here. So when I upload it, it'll already have all these changes. I'll let you do all this stuff yourself, but the class, you can just read too long to type it out and explain um, that way. Alright, so 